All right, so that was one hell of an adventure I just went on. Um, I didn't film it because it was a lot of trial and error, and I had no idea if it was going to work, but now I do. So this will be the thrilling and probably short conclusion of yesterday's damn near two hour long stream. So where we left off, I was trying to get my ace card to boot in this thing, and I was just having hella inconsistent results and just straight up not having a good time. I went on an adventure and searched through my things and found this Ace 3DS that I completely forgot I had yesterday and this DSTT. Um, this one came as a bootleg cart that I bought intentionally, but you know, it was still bootleg. I, I knew it was a bootleg, I just wasn't sure what the heck I was going to get. And then this one came with a console that I bought intentionally, but um, didn't realize it was coming with a flashcard. I guess the seller just left it in here. Anyway, allegedly this will work. I didn't even try it because this one worked the first try. So, what we need, we need a flashcard that is capable of running Twilight Menu. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to auto-boot, it just has to be able to run Twilight Menu, so basically any flash card. We need to have a DS that has been uh, flashed with FlashMe. I have not reflashed this since yesterday, I've changed nothing on the DS. Everything is identical to how it was. We boot it holding Start, Select, A, B. You'll see the power LED blink a few times. It boots into wood because I don't have auto-boot on Twilight set up. Then we need to load Twilight. I already have macro mode enabled in Twilight, so uh, everything's going to be on the lower screen as far as the user interface goes, which I'm pretty sure it is anyway, but the top screen is doing absolutely nothing. Then we need to run the enable NDS TV out. Program game thing, homebrew. Uh, give it a second, it'll boot back into the software here and we go into games or wherever you have your game stored we're going to go into Pokemon and we are going to boot Pokemon Mystery Dungeon now apologies still no sound on this thing I haven't done anything with that um, it is on it's just on a black screen and there it goes. Notice how quickly this boots. So either the problem was my ace card itself, or how I had it formatted, or something. I have no idea. But this is actually booting games in Twilight Menu. Anyway, let's go into the game. I already have a save file going just to test it out. And I'm going to quickly go over the buttons here. So from left to right, we have... P11, P12, and P10. Those are the buttons that I soldered yesterday. P11 enables picture in picture. Um, P12, wait, is it P11? Yeah. P12 changes the contrast of the picture in picture mode. So from least to most, we have four levels and then we can swap between um, one to one where you just have the top screen overlaid over the bottom screen swap between picture and picture and then change your contrast modes uh, and you can put it in the other corner if you want or turn it off entirely and then the last button which I'm fairly certain is P10 I'll have to double check that from the stream just swaps the screens entirely and then the contrast button does nothing in here unless you have picture and picture enabled. So you can do it either way you want. So it does work. The problem I was having entirely was software. I have no idea. Again, I don't know what it was. I can't even find my ace card right now. I think my cat decided to kick it under my desk or my fridge or something, but it's working. You just need a not shit flash cart. And I apologize to any Twilight devs who may or may not have been watching yesterday. I said a lot of shitty things about Twilight. It's mostly not true. I still don't 
think that Twilight on the DS is necessary, but it's nowhere near as shit as I seem to imply it was um, because I didn't have it set up properly or because my flashcard was shit. I genuinely don't know and I can't find it, so I can't find out for sure. Um, one thing I did reformat the SD card on this one to 32 KB clusters instead of the default. Uh, but before we go, there's one more thing I want to do. I have this other DS Lite here that is flashed with uh, FlashMe. We're going to boot it the same way. Notice it goes right into the firmware there. Uh, if you do not boot it in auto boot mode, this does not work. My theory behind that is if you're using auto boot mode, it boots with a certain region of the system firmware unlocked for overwriting, uh, whereas if you boot it normally, that region is normally locked. So the reason I wanted to do this was because I wanted to show you what it looks like when it's working uh, so you can troubleshoot if your buttons are funky or something. Um, let me enable the TV mode. Do, 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 do. Notice it looks identical. And I don't have any buttons hardwired up on this one, so we can't actually switch it over. But it should be good. You'd think by now I'd just put these in the same folder so I don't have to keep doing this. And there it goes. Okay. I thought it was uh, doing that thing it did yesterday where it was not working. Let's kill that light. So, notice, I only have one screen. The top screen should be displaying data. Uh, so, the um, repository mentions that they're working on a way to have display output and the top screen working simultaneously. I really don't know how that's going to work because it does not seem to work for me. And if we restart this normally, no auto boot, see my screen comes on, it does work, and you know, we'll go into Twilight menu, the screen turns off because it's in macro mode, you know what, that's probably why it's not working, hold on, I, uh, I did a dumb, I should have done more research, I should disable macro mode. Uh, what the hell button is it? It's not that one. I think it's that one. Macro mode. Off. I guess it has to reboot when you do that. All right, now let's do let me show you with macro mode off because I think Twilight menu was disabling the top screen. I think that was overriding the setting. I'm sorry. So on a normal DS with macro mode off, when we boot into that and enable TV out mode, notice what happens to the top screen colors are all wrong now. So that is the point I was trying to make. Um, it's not going to work. I, I mean, maybe, maybe it will. I don't know. But I think specifically what's happening is some of the color data lines uh, that we use for, for example, the buttons here get repurposed and so the LCD is no longer getting all the data it needs. I don't know that there is a um, workaround for that, but I also 
struggled for an hour and a half yesterday, something that I just showed off in five minutes, so who knows. But you see, it is working. It's just gross. And then one more time, I'm gonna reboot it and we're gonna do one more thing, this time without auto boot. Twilight. Oh, gotta go back one more. We're gonna try the Enable TV out. It looks like everything goes as planned, except that my top screen still has all the colors properly working and such. I already tried it on this one, and I verified that it was not working once I booted into the game, like the buttons weren't doing anything. Uh, so your top screen going funky is your indicator that it is going to work, um, or it should work as long as you have it wired up properly. Now, you can just boot the game to verify that. But I can't really do anything with the buttons. And note that you can use the TV out function with Game Boy Advance, sort of. Uh, you have to boot it through Twilight Menu to do that. I don't know if it works with physical carts, or if you have to use ROMs in GBA Runner 2, which I also couldn't get working, but I also haven't tried since. But you see, my colors are all fantastic now. So, we're going to try one last thing. I'm going to pop that back in here. I'm going to pop a game in here, and we're just going to find out whether that works or not. If we can get it to boot, there it goes. We need to enable NDS TV out. So I'm, I suspect, eventually. Uh, where this project is going to lead is someone is going to write a patch for the system that integrates all this stuff because we have to we have to chain load all this different software just to run a patch and I see no technical reason that that patch can't just be run from flash me or something and yep there we go that is still working. I mean, of course, it's not gonna do anything because there's only one screen, but it does work on hardware, so that is that is fantastic to know. And you'd get that little border. Uh, and you know what? Let us try one last thing. I know I said one more thing, and then I keep saying one more thing. But it'll be good, trust me. Or it won't, but at least we'll know. Uh. Alright, GBA backup. I should have pulled this out, but oh well. Let's try Pokemon Emerald. See if that boots. And this is using GBA Runner 2, so this is using the hypervisor instead of booting real hardware. And I've just got a black screen and none of my buttons are doing anything. So that could just be that um, it failed to boot the game itself, or it could be that it's incompatible, I don't know. Oops, 
we're gonna try one more thing to see if we can't get the game booting. Because uh, there are two settings and I don't know which one we need. Oh, I don't have it. Okay, never mind. We're good. We want try arm nine. If I recall correctly, on the DSI we need to set that to arm seven. But I don't know. Maybe things have changed, or I just don't recall correctly. Um, I also don't think we ran the TV out yet. I have also noticed visual glitches across the screen. I have no idea if that's Twilight Menu. This particular DS because this thing is a, a pile of junk or what um, someone else will have to uh, have to chime in on that one I've only tested one game with this And black screen again. My buttons don't do anything whatsoever. So yeah, that's that. Um, sorry I couldn't get this working yesterday. I, don't, I thought my flash cart was fine. I've owned that thing for like 12 years at this point and it's always just worked. Uh, but I guess it's gotta wear out at some point. Um, but either way, I hope this is helpful to anyone out there trying to play with this project. I don't have the rest of it to play with yet, as in the actual TV out portion, but I have verified that this will work in a macro, so you can build yourself a custom macro if you want, and enable your screen switching, and as far as DS consoles go, I think this is by far the best option uh, for a macro if you're playing um, regular DS games that don't necessarily require both screens, but sometimes you need access to the other screen. Um, obviously, if you're just playing Game Boy Advance, it doesn't make a difference, um, but still cool. Anyway, uh, I highly recommend waiting until this project is a little bit more evolved than it is currently. Don't just go out and flash all your DS lights with Flash Me, because chances are, if this works out the way I think it will, there is going to be custom software that you install instead of Flash Me, and unless something has changed since last time I checked, which it's been about 15 years, so it's entirely possible that something has changed, you cannot uninstall Flash Me from a DS Lite. You can uninstall it from one of these, but not one of these. Um, so I'd hold off on that if you're not fully committed. Uh, maybe you can override it. Maybe there'll just be an update or something. I don't know. I don't know what the future holds, but I do know that it does work as long as you have the proper setup but you do have to jump through all the hoops, including starting it in, uh, in uh, recovery mode, boot into Twilight, boot the uh, TV out enable, and then boot your game, which is a whole lot to do before you can actually get it working on your TV, which is probably why all the videos showed it off already booted instead of turning it on fresh. But there we are. Uh, sorry for the long video. Well, long-ish. Yesterday's video was uh, quite a bit longer, but um, for context, go ahead and check out the description, check out the stream link there, uh, watch about the first 20-25 minutes or so, uh, and then you can just jump over to here. The rest of that stream was me getting frustrated trying to figure out ex the exact steps to get this working, but just went over that. Um, if this doesn't work for you, I can't help you. I had a hard enough time getting it working for myself. Sorry, don't ask, I won't help. That's the end of that. Also, no, I don't know where to get ROMs. All of my ROMs are actually ripped um, from a 3DS, except for the ROMs on this. I don't know what the hell's on this, but that's another story. Um, I don't know where you can get ROMs. I can't help you with that. I don't know where you can get a good flash cart. I can't help you with that either. I literally stumbled upon these two, and the other one that I did actually intentionally buy, knowing what I was getting, 
I bought like 12 years ago. So, end rant. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic evening.